is going on, everybody? Wow. Wow. What a wild finale. I'm, uh, we'll get into it, but, uh, <laughs> Nick is in talk. I, it's, it was wild. Uh, it's a very uh, special episode. Uh, we have the one and only Kelsey Weir with us Woo! to help us break down this episode and to get to know Kelsey a little bit. Uh, before uh, you uh, get excited and jump ahead on this episode, we did just drop a recap to Monday night's episode. If you haven't listened to that yet, do yourself a favor, press pause, go back and listen to that to get the full breakdown. We have two wonderful guests, Arden Marine and Kathy Kelly, two lovely people, uh, OG Bachelor recappers, very funny, help us break down night one and then come back to this very special episode of uh the vile files um so yeah kelsey what's up hey she just flew in this morning she just flew in it's her kind of her first podcast lift lift up that mic a little closer to your face but the people want to hear you there you go now say hi hi yeah, there we go <laughs> can you hear me yeah. yeah uh kelsey what the what the fuck happened on this episode what didn't happen uh, <laughs> that's the real question so what what are your, yeah what are your initial thoughts just like first first reactions of what we just digested on the show um it's hard for me because i love both madison and hannah ann but my heart really went out to hannah ann yeah mm. like uh i felt like she handled herself like a champ she did she owned it I don't think any, like, I don't think people quite, I've, I've been singing Hannah Ann's praises for a while now. And I felt like, I mean, obviously she, she had time to prepare for this. She was very articulate. Mm -hmm. uh, she, you know, she, she sounded like she knew what she wanted. She just, she really owned the room when she did that. And I thought uh, it was really quite, quite fascinating. So you, I mean, I think everyone kind of feels for her. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about, uh, uh, are Peter and are Peter and Madison are they together or what's what's going on there? In my opinion, yeah. I think they're working it out. They're trying to figure things out, and I respect that. Um, yeah, we'll see how you, it goes. Do you think they'll work? You have to be honest. I know. Um, it's so hard because it's so new, but. Uh, <laughs> Come I'm on. sorry, Maddie, but no, I don't think it'll work. Oh. Why, why, though? You were talking before. I just, we're we're okay. watching the show. What are some of the things if that you I'm think might be, be honest, I would think I would think that would be the prudent thing to do? Yeah. So I know that I'm going to have to live with this, but, but also, my they honest... can prove us wrong. I mean, listen, that's Barb true. doesn't think they're going to work, no, so I and, feel like it's fine. And I, I hope it works out. I hope this works for the both of them. Yeah, I absolutely. Really do. Um, but... I think with Maddie, she should have been a little bit more honest about everything earlier on. What do you mean by that? Just with, um, you know, where she stands with her virginity and her religion. And I know she touched base on her religion, but, you know, lifestyle is a big thing when it comes to marriage. Yeah. And you can love somebody. And I said this even in Peru. You can love somebody so much, but if it doesn't line up with your morals and your values, that doesn't mean it's going to work in the long run because you have to have that balance of love and lifestyles and morals. And I think with Maddie and Peter, they both love each other so much, and that's you can clearly see that. Yeah. How, how it's much evident? You, do you feel like Peter really understands? Because when we were watching it, you were you kind of made it seem, and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that, and, and it's, it makes sense. Like when you're in that house, the women really get to know each other even more than like the bachelors. I mean, you, you women are spending all this time together. When I was a bachelor, I get to hang out with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, um, there was a Madison you got to know that maybe that you worry Peter hasn't, at least when filming? Yeah. But even when I say that though, Madison is such a great person that the Madison I saw Peter would still fall in love with. Sure. No, I don't doubt I that. I think yeah. that where the issue is, is even if Madison were to be fully upfront about her religion, I think Peter is so in love with her yeah. that he might think that they could match up. But you also have to be realistic in the sense where like 
there's a there's a difference in religion. There's a difference in morals. There's a difference in values. There's a difference in lifestyle. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, is this your person? Is this somebody that you can spend the rest of your life with? And I hope that they proved me wrong and I wanted it to work out for them. But I personally don't know if it will. In most relationships, I think obviously it's they're all about compromise. You're killing it, Kelsey. Kelsey's a little <laughs> nervous. She's a little worried. Like I just don't want to like. I love these people, so I don't want to make anybody upset or piss anybody off. I but think I'm, you have. I think I have you, my opinion. I think but. you have the full ability to be honest because Barb was honest, and we will get into that in a in, in a moment. But if if Barb can be honest, but you no. said the Maddie you knew at home was different. In what ways? Not that she was different, like at home is just more, she was, I feel like Maddie was a little bit more honest with us as a group. Uh Um, And I don't know all of her conversations with Peter. That's the hard part is, you know, we only get to see a certain percentage of what is shown. And I can relate to that because I know from my personal experience, people were to see other, you know, sides of me. They could think different things of me in a good or bad way. So I don't want to take that away from Maddie. Um, but from what I've seen of Maddie um, and her relationship with Peter about her religion, it's a little bit different than what we knew in the house. What did and you that's, guys know? We just knew that she was very religious and okay. it was it was a lifestyle. It wasn't so much just a choice. It was more of a lifestyle. And that's all it comes down to. And I don't know if that was articulated well enough to Peter. And if it was awesome, if it wasn't, that's her prerogative, if that's the right word yeah. for it. But um, even if it wasn't, he needs to figure that out. And even if it was, I think he was so in love with Maddie, it wouldn't have mattered. But it, in hindsight, maybe could have changed things. When you were filming, did you get a sense? Because I think it happens in a lot of season, like a lot of seasons like it ends and everyone's kind of like yeah i kind of always thought it was going to be this person or we always suspected so and so was the front runner Mm -hmm. did you feel like it was kind of did did the women in the house feel like madison was always the front runner i think the women in the house did but i didn't you didn't did you think it was you um i didn't necessarily i mean okay if i'm being say it honest yes okay should we I, pop some champagne? So we, can, should. Yeah. we should. We should definitely pop bit. some champagne. Let's get Woo! you get the honors. Feel, doing you're it. doing a great job. Valley's I feel like this. Over. Yes, this I was, love that sound. This will really put you over the top. Yeah, <laughs> you did a great job Thank this you. season. You nailed it. Thank you. Yeah, Team Kelsey on this. Team Kelsey. Oh. It's this? my first first podcast, like Woo! official podcast. You're doing great. And listen, I'm a, All right, I, cheers. a great TV. I've, uh, I've said Let's, a lot. Hold on. Cheers. Before you go, you get the, you have to cheers. Like do your bachelor cheers. Cheers. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> to being honest and, and authentic and uh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wait, no, you have to cheers and then. No. <laughs> he ruined it. Look, that was so it. bad, Nick. No, you have to, but you can't look at the glass. You have to cheer somebody in the eye or it's seven years of bad sex. Did you know that? Yeah, well, you know, I've been there. <laughs> Go. You didn't even look me in the eye when you. All right, okay, whatever. Wow. Wow. All right. Ruined champagne I know, again I for know. her. No, she. You, wow. you, she does not deserve this. God. You're very. You're very into your champagne drinking. Um. I don't even really like champagne. That's the funny thing. <laughs> Fuck. Um. So yeah, but like I said, I've I'm, I've been a Peter supporter this whole time. Even watching tonight. Oh man, I felt for I felt for Peter. Uh, I know people have been very critical uh, about Peter. It's ha- it wasn't his best night, like in so many ways. Like no one really. I just wanted to go and hug Peter. Like even when yeah. Madison came out, it was. And I get there's an uh, uncomfortable for her. She does like she doesn't even have Peter's family on her side. Um, but I like Peter just looked like marooned on an island, you know. And his <laughs> his mom just, you know. I just it's so hard. I can't emphasize enough how hard it is to be the bachelor and be in his shoes. And did he do things great? No, but at the same time, like, it's like he, you know, not everyone in the moment has uh, Peter's best interest in mind. And like they do big picture wise, but in the short term, they don't necessarily do. And so I really, I really, really, I, I feel for him in, in that regard. So I don't know, like it's, it's a tough position to be in. Um, I definitely have some more questions. 
uh, uh, Kelsey about uh, Hannah Ann and Madison. Okay. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you about uh, American Home Shield. I know you're dying to learn about it. Do you, I love American Home Shield. Do you own a home? Do, you, do your parents um, own a home? I rent, but my parents Your parents, like, you know, you have a lot of homeowner friends. I, yeah. I know I do. And I'll tell you what, uh, some big ticket items like uh, uh, your air conditioning, your heaters, your plumbing, those break down and they can be very un, uh, unpredictable high costs that uh, we don't always prepare for. And insurance covers a lot of things, but they don't cover everything. Isn't that right, Rochelle? That is right. I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, the beginning of every year is a great time to review your homeowner's insurance, to make sure you've got a great rate at the right, and the right coverage. The right coverage is very important. But a lot of us forget about all the things insurance doesn't cover. I bet you didn't realize that, Kelsey. No. Like your old HVAC unit, hmm? kitchen appliances <laughs> and plumbing. And we're not ready for the hassles and bills when those things break down. American Home Shield has a plan. They help those repair costs and... If they can't fix it, they'll replace it or find a better solution. Go to ahs.com slash V-I-A-L-L today to save $50 and start protecting your home and budget from inevitable breakdowns. ahs.com slash Vial. That's ahs.com slash V-I-A-L-L for $50 off any plan. American Home Shield. Be sure with the shield. Limitations and exclusions apply. See plan for details. Noom. Uh-uh. Noom. Noom. You have to remember, I still live in Iowa. <laughs> Uh, people Not for long, I'm sure. Uh, people in I- Iowa should be using Noom. I saw that laugh like, out there. Like everyone else. <laughs> um, Noom uh, is changing uh, healthy habits. They're, they're helping you have healthy relationships with food, Kelsey. Do you have a healthy relationship with food? What a question. Like... 80% of the time. So it's an app that you can download to your phone. I have it on my phone. It just takes about 10 minutes a day. You log on, you can log your food. It makes it really easy. You look up your food and they color code it so you know which is more calorie dense. And then they also just provide a support network. They provide you articles so you can understand why you eat, when you eat. And it's just a really comprehensive and behavioral approach to food. Shavings make a pile. Yes. Yeah. That's what we say here on yeah. this podcast. Mm-hmm. You say what? Shavings make a pile. You just do a little bit each day and it goes a long way to like creating great, great success yeah. in your life. You don't have to get overwhelmed. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, you don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Another way to say it. Sign up for your trial today at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. What do you have to lose? Visit N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to start your trial today. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. But you never let her answer the question. You asked her who she thought would win. And Wait, you, that was her not front a runner. question. I asked oh, her who her runner. front runner is. And? Oh, no, you asked oh, me. Oh, you're right. Who did you think it was going to be? You think Like yourself. since the beginning. And... This is going to sound really cocky of me, but if I'm in the house, when I was in the house, did I know he had a very strong relationship with Madison? Yes. But my focus was him and all I was visualizing is my life with him. So in that moment, I thought it was going to be me. Yeah, no. I, that's not, that's you if don't, I'm you being don't completely have, you honest. You do not have in any way need to feel bad about that answer as Great. as you should. I it's mean, a little naive, but... It's, it's funny. I don't know if you listen to the, any of these podcasts, but when I was watching it, I felt like when Peter broke up with you, at least in that moment, Peter's struggling. And in that moment, you were the only one who was giving Peter the things that he was asking for. You seemed... Yeah, you, you certainly had Champagne Gate. <laughs> you had a couple other moments where I literally thought you were just going <laughs> to go crazy. I was the crazy. dark horse of the group. Uh, but you really, you really... I really was. You were leveled off. You were an absolute rock star on your one-on-ones. Thank you. And, yeah. and under stressful situations, Tammy included, uh, you you really handled yourself. And then again, with Peter specifically, you you really... Uh, you guys really connected. And yeah, I I, I see why you have you felt that way. Uh, you had as... as as a justifiable as a reason to think that way, especially leading up to the point when she got sent home. Mm-hmm. I mean, people watching it, they didn't really understand the the Hannah Ann and Peter dynamic, at least, especially by the time you uh, went home. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like you and Peter had the strongest relationship. Deeper. So it, I don't think you need to feel bad about that at all. Yeah. But looking back a- after you, so who, who your, was your number two 
Madison or who who Madison being the being your own front runner who was the who was the woman you were most worried about Madison just because it's funny when we were in Costa Rica we were on the um telenovela date was at, like was it was actually my favorite group date and I remember Sydney being like you know Peter loves Madison and I was like honey he loves me oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, she was like, no, but look at the way he looks. And I was like, thing in my head. She's just trying to get in my head. She's trying to get in my head. But then I was like, kind of like, crap, you're right. You're right. You're right. But no, it's don't believe it. You know, you put out what you want, you know, and, and I wanted Peter and I wanted him to like feel the same way about me as I felt about him. And unfortunately that didn't happen and that's okay. Like, but when I was in that situation, I felt like he was my person and that was my focus. And that's all I saw. And I think that's I why that. I, you know, was able to progress my relationship as far as I did with him was because I saw clear vision with him and not all these other obstacles. Like everybody else saw, oh my God, this girl's crazy. <laughs> this girl's cussing bitches out. This girl's doing all the shit like she's bat shit. And I just saw, okay, he saw my crazy side. He saw my funny side. He saw my sincere side. Like he saw all the sides to me. And like when I went into this process, I wanted him to see all the sides to me because when I came out of this, my biggest fear was what if this person thinks that I'm somebody that I'm not? What if he fell in love with somebody that I'm not and I have to live up to this expectation or this world feels like I'm somebody that I'm not or I have to live up to this expectation that I'm not and I can't live up to that. So at least now, I set the bar really low. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I set the bar super low so the world's like, damn, this girl is crazy. She's okay. It's an interesting okay. plan. Yeah, that's an You know what I mean? Plan. But like now yeah. it's like, okay, this girl's kind of, she's not normal. <laughs> Nobody thinks I'm normal. I think I'm normal. I think you're normal. Do you? Well, I don't. I don't think people think. I don't I'm normal think there's any. Totally there's that. no such thing as normal. normal. Yeah. What is normal? But my true friends that know me love me. Like I am a re McKenna. <laughs> you guys, McKenna's here. Yeah, McKenna's here. She's in the back. She's not allowed to be on this podcast. She's not okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> She's here for emotional you have to cut that out. Rules are rules, Kelsey. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, my friends who know me, they know me, and. You know, I don't need to explain myself. Like, either well, like I mean, me or you podcast. don't. I've definitely always... want you to explain. <laughs> uh, no, but this is great. I I want to get more into. I want to learn more about like your state of mind after Peter broke up with you. But like, I want to. I don't want to jump ahead. Mm -hmm. I want to get your your take on on Peter's mom, Barb. Okay. Um, you're obviously close with your mom. Yeah. Right. Um, probably even more so. You know, you were very open about your relationship with your dad, and I'm sure, obviously, when he left, you only got close with your mom, and she's obviously a big part of your life. And it was, it to me, it almost seemed like, in a good way, your mom was the reason why Peter might have sent you home then, because it felt like, uh, your mom really articulated how much uh, you were falling for Peter, and I feel like maybe Peter had. He really, I think, it, it, that, as a viewer, I don't know if that's the case, but it really seemed like he's like, I can't do this to Kelsey. And he really was thinking about your heart in that moment. I could be wrong. But my question to you is, after watching tonight and and Barb just going fucking rogue and doubling down, how like how would how would you be if if your mom did what what Peter's mom did? Like, would you? How would you react? I mean, are you pro um, Peter's mom doing this and standing her ground, or do you think she might have gone too far? Uh, see, I see a lot of my mom and Peter's mom. Okay, how so? Um, in a lot of aspects. So, I've been in relationships before where my mom has not thought that the person I was with was right for me. And she's made that vocal. Okay. And, and how many I times has she been wrong? Not a lot. Okay. Ever? I mean, I'm still single. <laughs> so clearly never. Sure. I mean, let's be honest. Um, she really did like Peter. And um, 
She, but she never vocalized. I think he's the one for you. She just was like, I have my concerns. So she did vocalize. She that. would say that to you. Yes. Would she when uh, when um when you'd bring your boyfriend home? Uh, did she kind of passive aggressively or even aggressively let him know that, or did she only <laughs> say that to you? Uh, kind of a mixture of both. If I'm being honest, like no, please. So, um, not only do I have a very protective mother, I have a very protective twin sister. Oh, so she's a twin. I have a twin sister. Oh, no. My little sister is. Was that the? Is that the sister we got to see on the show? I'm looking at all these. Like, was that your whatever. twin? Uh, so my twin and my little sister were on the show. Okay. Um, yep. So m there's my twin sister. Is that one? And then my little sister is, I get the one that looks more like me is my little sister. Oh. My twin sister and I look nothing alike. Oh, that's funny. It's really funny. She's um, sweet. That's why everyone thinks they got a nose job because everyone's like, have you seen her twin sister? And no, but you have the same nose as your mom, right? As my mom yes. and my little sister. Yes. And I'm like, I literally did an Instagram post. I would not have posted that if I got a nose job. Yeah. I am proud of the fact that I get Botox, fillers, whatever. Yes, yes. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But I did not get a nose job. Oh, yeah. So anyways, sidetrack. <laughs> I too have not gotten a nose job. I mean, if Although, I did And people get a, have said I have. I know. If I, I got I've, a nose job, I'd be like, you're too total, perfect. You guys been, are too perfect. I've been, I've been accused of total facial reconstruction when all I did was grow a beard and get a tan. I know. The worst I get, I get this literally on a daily. You look like the white Michael Jackson, which is so offensive <gasps> to me because I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> and on top of that, I'm Well, like, he's done some shit lately, but... <laughs> Well, not lately. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like wait, what? Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's a terrible thing for people <laughs> Anyways, to say. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, I felt like I needed to address it to be like, stop fucking commenting yeah. on my shit saying I got a nose job. Yeah. I didn't. If I did, I would own it. Um, on our date in Cleveland, before we actually started the date, it was funny. Peter asked you if you had a nose No. Job. <laughs> Peter goes, Peter goes, wow, are your eyes that blue? And I said, yeah, it's funny you asked that because- the only two real things on my face are my nose and my eyes. And those are the two things that you get the most people ask on me. Are, did you get, do you have um, fake eye whatever? Contacts, and yeah. uh, did you get a nose job? That's so funny. But no one asked me about my cheeks or my <laughs> lips or my jaw until recently. People are like, yeah, but your lips aren't real. I'm like, no Wait, shit. I literally comment on a, my like. What about in your jaw? Oh, filler. Oh. You get a little get bit a, more defined. Oh, You've never wow. seen that, yeah. I mean, I, I it looks. I really probably good. have seen it. I just didn't realize. It's what been I was a looking while. At. It's a little worn off. Really it's good. fine. Um, okay. Well, thanks for being honest. Yeah, I, I'm, sure. I'm just saying. No. I can own my shit. I don't give. A sh I don't care. Kelsey, though. I know I'm cussing too much. What? No, you're not. Fuck. Shit balls. <laughs> it's fine. Um, <laughs> so your mom, she is opinionated. She, she, you, you, you relate to to Peter's mom at least. Uh, yes. And so are you, do you think that's good? Because it's, it is fascinating, right? Because I have dated people before. Um, I've, I've mentioned this. Uh, the first time I ever got engaged was well before the show. Uh, and we, we broke up and it wasn't a good breakup at the time. And at the time, my parents are always, I'm an adult too, right? And I was 28, 27, 28 at the time. And we broke up and they were just like, yeah, if we're being honest, we didn't really love her, you know? Not our favorite. And I would tell you that at, after we broke up. And in the oh. moment I was like, well, you know, thanks for telling me now. But would you have listened? That's the thing. I, I you know, but, and I do appreciate my parents, you know, they, th once I turn 18, I have younger siblings and they have like shit, other people to like fucking raise other than myself, but they were, you know, it, it is an interesting uh, debate on, you know, Peter is an adult, right? He's yeah. a 28 year old guy. And the question is, like, as I was watching it, I thought to myself, it's like, I get what you're, I get it, Barb. Mm -hmm. I do. And you, you might probably be right. But like, she couldn't, couldn't she have just said, hey, listen, Peter, we love you. We support you. We wish you the best. We'll be here no matter what. And that's kind of saying the same thing, right? Like, she did, did they have to like, you know, Madison's just following her heart, you yeah. know, Peter's just following his. And you know what? Maybe they're making the wrong decision. Maybe they are just forcing a square peg into a round hole. But man, like what if they do make it work? You know, like what if Madison uh, 
is willing to open up about seeing the world differently and Peter is willing to learn about, you know, Madison's faith and they come to a mutual kind of understanding. Again, probably not likely and I get that the odds are stacked against them, but I think what's important here is that Peter doesn't want to be with Hannah Ann and Hannah Ann doesn't deserve uh, someone who's lukewarm about her. Yeah. So I don't necessarily agree with, uh, well, I, you know, I love, I love Barb. It's just like, <laughs> what's the point of doing what she did you, we're all adults, right? Like, do you think your mom would do that now? Yes. I mean, did, has she always done that? She would. My mom is so protective of us that she, no matter if we want to hear it or not, she is going to voice her opinion because my mom's been through a lot of shit. And I think, I think the reason Barb is wanting to express her opinion is because I don't know so Barb's you're past. You're team Barb. I'm not. No, I'm. I'm team everybody. No, 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 like I, I see well, all sides in this. But but I'm, unless we love Barb, but I'm gonna. You, you you appreciate her point of view. I'm gonna be devil's advocate on this. So, yeah. for my team Barb side, okay. I think, just from what Peter has told me, I haven't heard a lot. But I think Barb's been through some shit, and okay. he just wants she or she just wants to protect her son. And I get her motivation. Totally. She sees red flags that when you're in a relationship you don't always see and i can relate to that because i've been in relationships where i don't always see the red flags my sisters have seen them my family's seen them and i'm just like you don't understand i'm trying to defend it and deflect it and i know deep down in my heart it's not going to work and it's not right but i want to fight for it and prove them wrong and in my personal um i don't know i guess what I've gone through in my life, it's never worked out. I hope it works out for them. I yeah. really do. Um, I get, yeah, I, it's, it is a fascinating because I'm sure Peter's parents know Peter better than anyone. And, yeah. and, and literally because they obviously are a close family and they spend time together. Right. But the question is, I guess the big question is, do we, do we let our kids figure it out at their, yeah. on their own? But you own? do. That's the thing. You know? And I think Maddie, this is the thing too, is I lived in the house with Maddie, even though Maddie wasn't, fully straightforward with peter she's a great person and she has a great heart when you when you say straightforward just so we're, we're clear do you feel like she deliberately in the moment misled him about her no. okay no i think maddie needed to do it on her own time and that was fine but there's your own time and there's bachelor time are you talking about like the big debate about like when Madison kind of told Peter about that she's saving herself before the fantasy suite? Um, it wasn't just that. It was like, you know, the whole religion aspect and there's there's different layers to it and and it's not my place to talk about it. It's mm -hmm. Madison's. But what I will say is with the whole thing, um, I love Madison to death, but when you are possibly committing yourself to marriage or an engagement with somebody in such a short amount of time, you have to take those chances and risks and have those tough conversations. And for me personally, it was a little frustrating because I had tough conversations that I didn't want to air out my dirty laundry about my family to the public, but I did. And for some people not to do that, it was in wait I understand um, I understand the give and take on that, but I also, it's like we have such a short amount of time. And when you're wanting to get to know somebody and progress your relationship and you're looking at a marriage, you need to have those conversations at a certain time. And if she thought that was the right time for her, that's on her. Like, yeah. that's great. And I guess in fairness now, they're they're – I, they're not engaged and it seems like they're going to take things at a snail's pace. And I think they will. Yeah. And I, but is I, he like going home and sleeping with I don't Barb's know. house I, I tonight? Think we, I think we have a lot of questions. <laughs> I think he needs to move out. I don't, think, I, th I don't think, I don't think, I don't know if they'll be doing press anytime soon, but we clearly have a lot of questions. Hopefully, I mean, I, I've been both supportive of Madison and I've obviously been critical of Madison. Um, obviously I'm team Peter all the way. Um, but I do, I think, 
I, I, I've teased Madison about the whole uh, Instagram thing. Is I do genuine and real thing. Yeah, and uh, because I don't think that's very genuine and real, but I do think Madison has character, and I do she think is. she uh, means well. I also think some of her mistakes that I've been critical of come from a place of of youth, in that yeah. you know. Um, and I think it takes a lot of guts for her to stand up to Peter's mom the way she did. And she and had she, the right to do that. And it wasn't totally fair of, of Barb to, to, to say that to Madison. Kelsey, I really want to talk to you about uh, better uh, help. Better help? Better help. Batch, uh, being on The Bachelor really messes with your mind, doesn't it, sometimes? It really does. <laughs> do you, uh, um, have you ever talked to, have you ever uh, talked to anyone about mental health? Uh, just my doctor. Yeah. Well, uh, at BetterHelp, uh, we, uh, we very much, we, we are very supportive of people talking to therapists and mental health professionals, whether it's for your anxiety, if you have depression, ADD, ADD if you're going through anything, <laughs> um, we're very, so we're very supportive of that. And it can be very, very challenging, um, to look for a, a, a healthcare professional that f fits your needs, or it can be scary. But the, the good people at BetterHelp are, are making it easier for you. Uh, you can do it right from the comfort of your home. Uh, they will, uh, you'll take a quick survey. They will align you with a, a healthcare professional uh, of, your, of your needs and desires. And if you don't like them, they'll just give you a new one. Uh, my friends have tried it. They love it. Uh, they were really grateful. I, I got them on that. Um, so if you're listening, if you've ever questioned uh, or been curious about uh, seeking uh, m mental health help, uh, with a professional, we we highly encourage it. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. The Vile Files listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code Vile. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Kelsey, are you moving to LA anytime soon? Um, Maybe? I think. I, okay, I mean, just to just say quick yes or no, because I have furniture that you should definitely get if you do. I want to make sure I can afford it before I move to well, LA. One, you know, yeah. one, one way to afford it yes. is buying. One way to afford it is, is to let us start get posting article. before. There you go. Article. JK, kind of. Anyways, <laughs> when you move to LA, you're going to need some furniture and you should check out Article. I have an Article couch. Uh, so I, do I. I've had an Article couch long before Article was a friend of our, our podcast. Rochelle uh, quickly got on the bandwagon. Uh, mine's blue, it's velvety. It's uh, oh, it's wonderful. It's very original. I, get I a lot love of, that. It's uh, uh, Rochelle's got a, a leather one. She still has. It's it's sexy. Hasn't it's really hot. broken it in yet. But, Shut uh, up! Why do you gotta do, uh, Why do you gotta do me like that? I've always wanted a pink velvet couch. Ooh. I don't honestly don't know if Article has one, but they have very contemporary, very uh, trendy furniture. Modern, yes. Plus, they deliver it right to you. They can help you set it up, and you can return it. it they just yeah, if you don't like it, you want something else, let's return it. It's super really? easy. Yeah, and it's it looks really expensive, and it's very affordable. Look, they do have pink velvet. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Kelsey so for the win. Too. Look at that. And it's Blush, only, pink oh, my stuff. God. Anyways, that just means I need to move to LA? You need to yeah. check it out. I think uh, that that's a, that's, a, that's a nice article. I think I, I think it pulled I want my pink elevator. velvet couch. Now I want a pink velvet one. <laughs> it goes wrong. Article is offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase for $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash V-I-A-L-L. And the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. All right, so are, uh, have we, have we uh, fully covered the finale before we really dive into Kelsey? That's up to you. Were you surprised that he proposed to Hannah Ann? Were you really spoiler, were you spoiler free? <sighs> have yeah. You didn't know you any of the talking to happened. Hannah Ann? Literally, it's been so annoying for me because their mouths have been shut. As someone who's been the top two a couple times in The Bachelor, uh, we people talk a little bit. You know, everyone tells someone, oh, no. tell family members. But I don't know if if the good people at ABC or Warner Brothers went and said, "Listen, we'll make it worth your while." Yeah, don't because no one talked. You know, no one talked. Um, and if you tell your parents and you you tell one person, they tell like. It's truly amazing that it, it played out this way and, and it was pretty much spoiler free. So um, I am amazed by that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. 
So you had you been talking to her and she just wouldn't like tell you? Yeah, I've talked to both Hannah Ann and Madison and I've tried to give little hints that this is what I think happened. Yeah. And they're like, no one's been spot on. And like, give me something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I Props to Hannah Ann oh. because being in her shoes and not... Yeah. Especially after Peter broke up with her. Mm -hmm. um, to stay steadfast with this whole spoiler free, she doesn't have a lot of people to talk about. I'm sure the producers uh, constantly reached out to her. They are good at um, uh, the best they can of, of being kind of an emotional support system where, where they need to be. And, you know, hopefully Mass uh, Hannah Ann was able to like tell like our mom or dad, but like, how hard that must have been for Hannah Ann to not really been able to have uh, her closest circle of friends be that kind of uh, support system that you normally would have in a breakup, right? Like, yeah. you know, you go through any type of serious breakup, you have a, a, a group, you, a lot of people have a group of people. They don't just have one friend or a parent. There's like a group of people because you kind of wear, <laughs> you wear people out mm -hmm. with your heartbreak. You're just like, can we talk? And they're like, yeah, okay. And then the next thing you do is you pick up the phone and call someone else who's just willing to listen. And mm -hmm. Hannah Ann wasn't able to do that, you know? And if she was, if she did do that, it would have got out. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she clearly must have not been able to talk a lot. And I really, my heart goes out to her for, for that reason, because it must have been even worse given the fact that she wasn't able to talk about it, uh, at least with enough of people. And, you know, as much as a parent can do, like one parent over and over, you sometimes need to like just talk to a handful of people so man i really i really feel for her yeah no i felt for her too and i told her i was like hey i don't know what you're going through i know you can't tell me maybe you're with him maybe you're not i don't know but maybe just invest in a counselor that you like and see where that goes maybe i don't know if you're with like, him or not i feel but like you kind of maybe suspected that she might no be. honestly at the time i didn't know if it was like her going through the whole re-watching the show and seeing his relationships progress with other girls or if it was her heartbreak i had no idea uh -huh. but you knew she was down but i knew th i mean there's always going to be ups and downs i had ups and downs yeah. but i couldn't tell that to I her mean, because vanessa and i had plenty of ups and downs yeah it's, that's all we had no matter if you go home night one you feel rejected week two week three like it doesn't matter when you go home you feel rejected and then especially when you start to develop feelings for them and it's not reciprocated and there's other girls like it's just it's hard and i couldn't imagine being final two and and i didn't know hannah ann's situation and i couldn't imagine what she was going through rewatching this i'm like okay get it now i get why she was feeling the way she was and like my heart breaks for her but i hope you know she was able to at least talk to somebody. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Again, I'm sure the the producers did as much as they could, but there's only so much you can do. And uh, yeah. I listen. I also think Hannah Ann's gonna be fine. Oh, it's she's gonna be totally it's the, fine. It's the summer of Hannah Ann. <laughs> Hannah Ann's beautiful. <laughs> uh, if, if, uh, she's fine. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we contain the coronavirus. And <laughs> she's allowed to travel because she is gonna. She's gonna be out and about and living her best life. This oh, summer. yeah. Um, Boys but, are gonna be all over her. Speaking of heartbreak, uh, back to to yours. Uh, I want to. <laughs> okay. I want to remind you of yours. I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. Go back to that place. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I've been really, looking I, forward to this I, all night. I really did feel for you, and um, I didn't. F you know, I'm. I don't feel a lot of heartbreak when I watch the show because I honestly don't believe everyone, and especially mm -hmm. I've been in that shoes in those Peter's shoes. It's like I feel like most of the time when when you have to break up with someone, there's a lot of sadness, but it's mm -hmm. mostly a sense of embarrassment and not wanting to leave your friends. You don't make a, a strong connection, but a select group of people who go on that show do, and you were certainly one of them. Um, well, I mean, what was that like? Did you, were you preparing yourself or were you, or, or were you totally blindsided? I was very blindsided. Like I said, in my exit interview, if, um, or no, and at the Women Tell All, if I wasn't blindsided, I, I'm i known as a crier on the show, which is funny because I am an emotional person, but I don't cry every day like I did on the show. I don't cry as much as I did yeah, in normal life. But I would have definitely cried way more. Um, and I know they were trying to get the tears and all that, and I was like, I just, I'm so in shock. I don't know, like, 
what to think right now. I didn't, I couldn't process what was happening until the next day. And then the next day is when they really should have had the cameras on me because they couldn't stop crying. Cause yeah, when Peter broke up with you, you were like almost strangely like calm, you know, you like yeah. hug the girls and well, that's pretty common. That's, you know, that's pretty common. Part of it too was my mom. She did tell me when you left your hometown. Yeah. So the conversation with my mom was like, my mom was very scared. I was going to get my heart broken because she could see how deeply I felt for Peter and my family loved him. They didn't show a lot of my conversations with, or my family's conversations with Peter. They only showed a few, actually they only showed my mom's conversation with Peter. Yeah, sure. Um, but my mom goes, Kelsey, if this doesn't work out for you, I know you're going to leave with class and grace. Mm. And I was just thinking in my head, fuck, I've not done that the whole season. <laughs> so I was like, I need to make my mom proud. Yeah. And <laughs> so I think just every- I thinking in my head, like- Class and grace. When, when class I was and like, grace. Well, every parent- I was like, my mom, my mom, yeah. don't cry, don't cry. Class and grace, class and grace, Aww. class and grace. It's funny because every every parent, like when they go at their hometown, it doesn't matter if you end up being the winner or you're the yeah. f- next person to go home. Every parent is like, this is nuts. And this is insane. insane. And they have the same fear as every yeah. parent is, how brainwashed is my kid? You know, they don't know. They're just worried. They're like, well, they're, their kid left thinking, yeah, I'm going to go do this thing. And they come back and their kid is just like, I'm in love with this stranger. You know, like. But my mom knows I'm not one to be brain. I'm so no, I'm strong sure she, she, I'm sure. I, I, again, I don't doubt it. But I'm saying every parent has that. There, yeah. There's that moment where there's like, hey, just, you know, I love you no matter what. Yeah. And if, if it doesn't work out for you, I want you to. You know, I you're, think, be the strong woman that I know that you are. Yeah, I think for me, it wasn't so much the brainwash. She was just more like, shit, Kelsey might go bat shit. And she didn't know about, cham- she kind of knew about Champagne Gate, <laughs> but she did not know about Champagne Gate. So she was like, when she saw it, she was like, oh my God. Like, sh- I felt so bad for my mom and my family in that Aww. moment because they had to defend me. Oh, bless their souls. Anyways, um... So I think her, out of her fear, she was like, oh my God, what is Kelsey going to say to him? How is she going to react? Like, But I have nothing but love for Peter. And that's the thing with me. If I have ill will towards you, I can get a little nasty, you've seen. Um, or if I don't have the full story and I feel betrayed, that's when I get defensive. But if I have respect for you and I know you're a good person you have a good heart whether you do me wrong or not like i can respect that and move past it and with peter like he was just following his heart and like i'm gonna get emotional but like i have so much respect for him yeah he's such a good person i i, I think you're the sweetest kelsey and i like i one thing is my favorite thing about you when watching the show is that, that- <laughs> No, is that you? Yeah, you. Uh, you. You. You're clearly a very loyal person. I don't. W- w- was I right about that? By by thinking that, if I like somebody, I, I will be. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't, loyal doesn't mean you like everyone. Loyal yeah. means that it, it actually might even mean the opposite that you're very selective <laughs> yeah. as a group. But if you, I'm, do, I'm very selective. You're a bit. You're a bit of a ride or die person. Yes. You. You seem like. Um, even with McKenna, you were very close to defend her when, when things came up and you could tell you didn't hesitate. And I've been in that world before where you can tell there's a lot of people who are just like, I'm not, I'm just going to keep to myself and I'm not, I don't really want to defend anyone because I don't want to look bad. And you could tell that you weren't, um, uh, that you, you are a very loyal person. And I, I, I value loyalty a, a lot in my life. And so that's, that's why I always really enjoyed watching you. Um, so it's nice to hear that you feel so fondly about Peter and you, and you, you understood that, um, while it didn't work out, it, it, you know, at least came from a place of, you know, his decision came from a place of love because, you know, unfortunately, um, he didn't reciprocate in that moment. Looking back, um, do you still, I mean, now people ask this question, but like, do you still like, are you, you, do you see it clearly now? Do you still have some regrets or do you look back and, and wish there's things you could have said or you, you're fine with it all, how it all played out? Um, I don't have regrets because Peter, like nobody has, I didn't even know I had that in me to react the way I did in certain situations. And the fact that Peter saw me at, almost my worst and mm-hmm. still accepted me. I mean, top four, like <laughs> I should have been sent home after champagne gate. Um, 
you know, I have so much respect for him for that. But also, I I don't know. I just really value somebody that can appreciate you for the core of who you are and value that. And I, like I said on the Women Tell All, whether it's a friendship or relationship, if somebody can appreciate that, accept that in you, they're going to be a good friend, ride or, ride or die. I don't need a ton of friends. I want loyal friends. I want good friends. And those are the people I need in my life. Where would you, I want hype people. Where would you rank uh, your breakup with Peter in, in terms of um, your the greatest greatest heartbreak of your life? Um, that's a really tough question. I know. <laughs> Take your time. I mean, I would. It's hard for me because. I, when I, I don't have, I haven't had a ton of relationships. Okay. How many, how many serious relationships have you had? I would say, I mean, would you consider high school like serious? Whatever it mean, meant to you. <sighs> okay. If you, if you want to count high school, like serious. Just what, however uh, you felt three. heartbreak. Oh, three. Okay. And that, do you include Peter or is that before Peter? That's before Peter. Okay. And what's your longest relationship after high school? Um, Two and a half years. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty long. How we long lived ago? together. We lived together. How long ago was that? Um, about a year before, or year and a half maybe before I why, went on to the show. Why did that end? Um, just differences in uh, life. He wanted me to stay at home. He was wanted to be a doctor. When we first got together, I was a cosmetologist. Still, I could work around his schedule. And then when I started when I got into sales as a clothier. It, what, yeah, <laughs> next question. <laughs> I knew that was gonna be a question. Um, and, and when mom not a fan? Uh, of- Last boyfriend. Um, was for a while until she saw I was giving up certain parts of my life for him. And I realized that now, and that's why with Peter, I asked him about, you know, how do you, not all of this made there, but some of it did of how do you want your life? Do you see yourself having kids? Like how many kids do you want to have? Do you want your wife to work? How many days a week do you want her to work? Um, when we were in Peru, we talked about it on the mountain. I was like, I want to work, you know, part-time. I still want to raise my kids part-time because I nannied for a family of four. Um, they had triplets and a year and a half year old. And I want to be in my kid's life, but I also want to, have my own thing and he wanted me to just have his life and raise the kids and i didn't want that peter said that no 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 her, no, no, her no. Last, my, her my ex friend. um and it just reminded me a lot of my parents relationship and i didn't want that oh did you end up did you end up ending that relationship well, obviously, I he came on the show. <laughs> well, I don't know. You could, you know. <laughs> um, but you end it. You, yeah. yeah, no. Um, it was kind of a mutual decision. We were on and off. I have a. I will admit, I have a very hard time on letting go of things. Yeah, um, right. Um, yeah, me too. So when relationships end, it takes a couple months to almost a year for me to like move on from it and like for it to stop. Did you kind of do that? We broke up and then we kind of oh, sneak hooked up. Around. With, yeah, absolutely. A lot of your friends have sex. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've, I've been there before. Yes. Uh, what was the final uh, like deal breaker for you when you realized I need to like completely cut it off? Um, he chose a girl that he was going to school with that I never thought he would be with because he talked a lot of shit about her. Uh. I just wasn't really threatened by her. Um, and then I found out they were hooking up and then I found out they were dating. Then I found out they were dating just because it was convenient. It was just like this cycle and I was just like, fuck you. Like a big fuck you. Yeah. And then my um, <laughs> friend who had signed me up for Colton season of The Bachelor and I was like, no, I'm not over my ex. I can't go on this was like, Kelsey, it's been three months, you're miserable, you literally can't get out of bed, try out for The Bachelor, come to Chicago, and I did it, now I'm here. Like, here, it's just so weird. Here we are. Now, for the really important question, what is a clothier? 
Um, okay, so it's I honestly should have just fucking put sales. Like, <laughs> by being honest, I want to know what it is. Okay, so I sell. I work for a custom clothing company. Okay, um, it's really high end. We sell like shirts, um, suits, sport coats, jeans, slacks, like everything. Um, you kind of outfit the men. Um, and yes, we <laughs> we outfit people. Um, but it's it's sales. It's um. I have a really great clientele. Awesome. Do you go to it's, their house? Um, houses or offices, but it's been honestly like since the show, it's been really hard. Oh. Um, but the clients that I do have been, have been so good and loyal to me, and they've been my biggest. They've been like my hype girls. Nice. It's been so great because I've had so much hate, and I've had clients be like. I just want to call and check in on you and make sure you're okay. Like they're like my family. Oh, that's it's nice. So great. Like, but why has it been hard? I mean, Champagne Gate was awful. Like on your business? No, just like in general. Like oh. the hate I yeah, got. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, yeah. It's gotten hard. It's it's gotten worse and worse. I know they obviously talk. Yeah. About it on, on I mean, even my family. Like my family's gotten so much crap. Like my mom's gotten messages like, "How could you raise a daughter like that?" My dad shamed my mom. Because of it on social media, and that's why him and I aren't talking anymore. I'm sorry. About which oh, sorry. he doesn't know that. So if you're listening, this is why. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am. I am sorry. I got to go through that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we just live in a weird time when it comes yeah. to the internet, and uh, I don't know. People are just kind of bored of their fingertips and and say say yeah. mean things. I, I do not know why. What is next for you, Kelsey? Paradise. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I want to see you at Paradise. I'll say that. Much. Why? <laughs> You'd be uh, so good. Your only real threat of Queen of the Beach is Hannah Ann, if I'm being honest. But you, there can be multiple queens of oh, the beach. Oh, she's way more fun to watch than Hannah Ann. Uh, really? Hannah, yeah. Hannah, Hannah, well, more fun. But Hannah, Hannah Ann, I'm just saying, like, you, you, you definitely should, you should 100% should go. Yeah. Uh, I know that your stepfather has some reservations, <laughs> as you, you mentioned. Literally every uh, Sunday dinner. Tell your <laughs> Wait, stepfather. Why? It's the prayer. Well, uh, every the Sunday. Prayer that you don't go every on. sunday dinner <laughs> i go over to his house it's like dear god no please guide kelsey in the right direction of not going on paradise i uh t- <laughs> tell tell that's a good, swear, that's a good stepfather honestly tell your stepfather that i promise him it'll be a good decision i'm sure he'll listen you. to this so if you want to send him a message it'll be a good decision for you uh <laughs> it's it's a different experience it's a lot of fun i i think you have the type of personality that would thrive in 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 a place like paradise um we get it yeah i promise you 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 would like listen um yeah, they, they they tend to appreciate more animated people on the beach. I'm not animated. But you you should, yeah, you are. You should be proud of it. <laughs> that was a joke. Um, and no one gets my humor. And it, no, I got it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just personally, I think you should go. Um, and I think a lot of people. Even if they set her up against Tammy or someone. Ew. Sorry. Should we talk weird. about Tammy? No, we should take that part out no nah, we can keep it it's fine you're not but you're not good friends with tammy yeah that is true she knows how i feel that is yeah. true um yeah i have mixed feelings about tammy uh, it's so tammy's As an interesting she, she's an interesting character because so many people especially like watching really enjoyed tammy because uh you were part of a, a group early on that was part of this kind of nutty little group on champagne great if i'm just being <laughs> honest and tammy seemed to be one of the few kind of voices of reason until she was not um and then it just then she she did she pulled a barb or or barb pulled a tammy either way they they decided to like do something stupid double and then down. and double down double where everyone's like why are down. you doing this like i don't like <laughs> what is going on um have you not have you so you haven't reconciled with tammy Wait, first off, I love your champagne thumb. Yeah, I'm keeping you close, um, and then, keeping you close to my heart. Yeah, I love that. Um, but second, okay, so this is the funny thing with Tammy that a lot of people didn't realize, except for probably me, because I knew the whole backstory with her, so I was watching for it. Even with Champagne Gate, when she was consoling me, 
if you watch back, which no she, one's I going, don't remember. She was consoling you. She was consoling me. Yeah, no, but then I know, in her I know that move, ITMs, for a, I know that she move. was talking yeah. crap about me. Sure. So they were, you know. Classic move. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, 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 people accused a mm -hmm. VP of doing the same thing to Alea. Did they not? You you can say it in the mic. <laughs> Kelsey's agreeing with yeah. Me. I mean, a like a like, like, like people make yeah. like and it doesn't mean VP is a bad person. No, she's, absolutely not. It's facts are facts. She just that's what she did. Anyway, so, I mean, it's it's a fact, and you know. So you're not. Uh, so she did. So you were never close with Tammy, and it sounds like you guys no. have not reconciled. No, uh, but like for her to not apologize to me or like other people, but to do it on Twitter to me that was disrespect and that hurt. Yeah. And then for her to come to me afterwards and be like, we're cool, right? I'm like, it seemed, are we? It seemed like I wanted to like Tammy. Not that I don't like Tammy, but it seemed... You can have your own opinion. It seemed like uh, I was disappointed. Like, it was a weird thing. Usually at Tell All, you watch the season back and yeah, you might get defensive and you might have an issue with the show and how things were aired. But if you don't come into that willingness to say, you know what, regardless... Maybe in certain moments I was at my best self, and you and you uh, show some contrition. Like you've you've you have you've lost the point. And so like you, you were amazing on Tell All. You 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 kind of owned up to it. Like you you know the things you owned up here. You didn't try to be perfect. You didn't go out and blame anyone else. You kind of owned the silliness in your silly moments, and like people liked you for it. I don't quite get why Tammy decided to just say. No. I think what's crazy to me is she told me she was going to apologize and the fact that she didn't was just honestly hurtful. She Wait, she suggested that she was going to until all apologize on the show? Mm -hmm. Oh, well. And that was hurtful to me that she didn't. And I think that's why it's, I'm moving forward and I, you know, forgive her and I don't have ill will, but okay. are we ever going to be cool am i ever going to trust her no yeah, you don't have to but i don't have to you, that's life you might have to deal with her in paradise but that's fine <gasps> i mean most go. likely most I likely mean, if I do it's a strong bet uh that can i ask what's your type what's your type in guy besides peter yeah, uh that's i think i think the reason i liked peter is because he's not my type oh what is your physical type and then emotional type okay so for me, it's not, I, I don't know if I really have a type, we'll say. It's more like um, a feeling I get. Oh. Like that initial feeling um, where you're interested, you're intrigued, or there's just something about the person. And I got that with Peter night one, and I was not expecting it because Peter wasn't really my type. <laughs> but Peter's so cute. He's so like, you know, he's just, it's he's Peter, but... I was like so attracted to Peter the moment I met him and I got that like spark. And what I've noticed with me is um, my serious boyfriends or like the people that have meant the most, most to me in my life, I've gotten like a feeling, you know, yeah. for, and that's kind of what I look for. It's, I mean, looks are important, obviously. Um, Personality is important. Banter is important. Conversation is important. Values are important. Those all have to line up. But I also think that initial attraction and feeling that you get with somebody is just as important. Mm. So it's not necessarily like a type. It's yeah. more of a feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. No, the, you're uh, no. I, I get it. Like, so is it safe? Like, I'm curious. Well, maybe maybe this will help explain it. Okay. Uh, your your Peter, your last boyfriend were they all very different or what was the one thing that was very similar about them? You know, like they all had a good sense of humor. I don't know. Or they were um, like, Peter's good with his words, right? He's very affectionate. Were other yeah. boyfriends like that? No. And that's one thing I really liked about Peter was the emotional connection. Like I said, I know, you know, I, I know nobody believes me, but I really don't cry as much as I, I did on the show. Kelsey, I like, believe you. I, believe I also you. don't cry as much as I did on The Bachelor. You don't have to it's, convince I me. believe her. Everyone's yeah. like, I cr literally cried every day on the show. Don't get me wrong. But in real, I'm like, why am I crying? I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a funny, You know what's funny? Thing. Is my twin sister is the most unemotional person ever. Like she never cries. I cry in movies, all that stuff. She never cries. As soon as I walked in the house and she was mic'd up, she was, Kelsey, why am I crying right now? And I'm like, 
Kayla, because you're mic'd up and you're going to be on national television. And I wasn't crying. I felt so proud in that moment. And I was like, so it's I a, can help you. It's, it's okay. It's, you just, know it's I feel. an emotional <laughs> mind fuck, the whole experience. I know, but it was so sweet because my twin sister, if she would have watched this and not felt that, honestly, it was a blessing that my whole family made home downs because they kind of got a glimpse into what I went through, mm -hmm. like a small glimpse. Um, so when I came back, they were more sympathetic to me. Can you answer one question I have? Is that, what? Okay, about Sydney. What happened to Sydney? Why does she leave so unceremonious, unceremoniously? I have no idea. Oh, I don't think there's anything to it. Is I there nothing? My, I'm I'm guessing Sydney's just as uh, baffled baffled as as anyone. I think you friends with Sydney. Yeah, I, honestly. Sure. Okay, this is, no, 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 no. That, okay, that's yeah. really bad. Okay, this is the thing. She doesn't come across as a very nice person. <laughs> I could be wrong. No, I'm, I'm Sydney happy. is nice. I think this is the thing with me. I got all my shit out on TV. So when it came to the Women Tell All, no one was surprised about anything because I cleared the air on TV. I didn't just talk shit in my interviews. If I talked shit in my interviews, they already knew how I felt to their face. That was my goal going into everything was yeah. I will say it to your face before I talk shit in an interview. And if I talk shit in an interview, you will hear it to your face. It caused a lot of drama with me. But at least going into the women tell all, when people started coming at me, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about her saying this? It's like, honey, I already squashed this. What are you trying to do? You're just trying to deflect your own issues by putting it on me. It's not going to work. Hmm. AKA Tammy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you like that little I, plug? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I loved it. Uh, right, is there anyone from Hannah B's season uh, that uh, you fancy? No. No one? Honestly, like... like you have to be new blood? No, I just... I don't know. I think, like I said, it's kind no of one? a feeling. It's... What if Jed showed up? You think Jed's going to show up? No. Jed has Jed, a girlfriend. First off, Jed has a girlfriend. Yeah, sure. and Jed, Jed will always have a girlfriend. <laughs> I think that's much, that much we know about Jed. It doesn't necessarily mean that he won't be available to He's go He's going to be meeting someone at and the pier. And you know pier. what? That, is, that did not stop him last time. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so not Jed. Who else would be available? Tyler? Would you date Tyler? I mean, I've never met Tyler. I think he's cute, but he's so he's cute. Are you laughing? I just think he's so cute. Sorry, get giddy. Yeah, Tyler's hot. <laughs> I mean, she would date Tyler. Yeah, we well, know. yeah. <laughs> I think most people would. Yeah. Um, who 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 are some like people like you know Dylan's all wifed up? Bukowski. That golfer guy didn't. That didn't uh what was it? Garrett. Garrett. I love Garrett. You loved Garrett. I think he slid into like Sarah's DMs or Ooh, something. Ooh, T. Mm -hmm. Right? T. Has anyone slid so. into your DMs from Hannah's season? No. Great question, Nick. No. No one. I'm like old, Nick. You have to remember I'm yeah, like you the didn't, old. You didn't get the credit you deserve for being an uh, elder. And everyone's like, this Cass, I mean, I did act really immature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. And I you look great. Thank you. Uh, it's the Botox. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, I did act a little immature on the season. That doesn't mean I'm immature in real life, but, you know, take it for what it is. Uh, but no, I think everyone thinks, especially after Champagne Gate, this girl's bad shit. I don't want to talk to her. So uh, no one's sliding into my DMs. <laughs> Yet. Yet. I just get yeah. creepy. Guys. Uh, well, Claire's, Claire's <laughs> season starting in a few days. Uh, I have no doubt that in about two to three weeks that the the uh, the DM sledding is going to start as soon as they get sent home. Yeah. They're going to start really. That's that's going to just, you know, just a heads up there. Uh, okay. As they go home, they start sliding the DMs of the season of the women before them. Do they? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's gonna, they're coming in hot, Kelsey. Wait, why didn't that happen to me? No, no, no. You're, you, they haven't. They're not on the show yet. No, but the cast before. No, I'm talking about. <laughs> it's different. It's it's always different. It's it's like you you're the 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 women on the Bachelor are, are like this year's new you know group of people, and then the Bachelorette hasn't happened yet. Okay. So got now it. they're about to go uh, pursue uh, Claire. It'll be, it might be different this year because I don't know how old the cast is going to be. There was one guy well, that I saw They'll go in a spoiler. home and they'll come back and they'll start sliding all your DMs. Yeah. There was one guy I saw in a spoiler. I don't know if it's like true, but his Instagram is blocked or whatever. So that 
probably means that he's on the season. We'll, um, we'll see. And he's my age, and he was really cute. Oh, you're checking him but out. But he also might be kind of douchey. Well, that's inevitable. Uh, that's you can't have great. <laughs> but he was without... cute. I'm not going to say the name, but I was like, hey, mm. okay. Um, any any final thoughts before we let Kelsey go? I just Wait, you didn't ask me about a funny. St- Dating oh. story. You told me to have dating prepped. story. I prepped. was asking about your uh, your exes. That would have been the time to. Uh, you said have funny dating stories yes. and be. You have a She's fun prepared. dating story for. Her? I actually have like two funny ones, and I don't know if they're there, but I really want to tell them. One is from my sister, and then one is um, from me. It's not that funny. Actually, I won't tell that one. Pick, pick the one where you learned something about yourself. Okay, so. It's really hard dating a twin, I learned, um, partly from me. And dating with a sister. twin? Well, so I'm a twin. I have a yeah. twin. Mm-hmm. And if your twin sister doesn't like the person you're oh. dating, it's really difficult. Yeah. Um, I does learned she, that on does my she end. Barb them? It's just it's not good. Now. It's just not good. I've learned that on my end, and she's learned that on her end. Um, we make it difficult on each other because we spend a lot sure. of time together, you know? So we were in uh, college and she was dating this guy and he like thought I was a bad influence on my sister. I'm like, she's my fucking twin sister. Of course I'm a bad influence on her. (laughs) And on top of that, why does it matter? We're 21 years old. Like, you know, I'm not telling her to go do something to jeopardize your relationship. I just want to have fun. Anyways, so he was like telling her we couldn't hang out, whatever. So they finally got back together and I, sh- I was out with one of my girlfriends. I came back. It was the middle of January in Iowa. You know how cold it gets in the I Midwest. Yeah. So I walk back. Kayla and I shared an apartment. Kayla's my twin sister. We shared an apartment. And I see these um, white tennis shoes sitting at the doorway. And I was like, those are f- fucking his shoes. I was so pissed. So, um, you know, I thought it was funny. And I was like, do I put these in the oven or the freezer? Put them in the freezer. It's January. Oh, no. So this is at like 12 Her o'clock at night. shoes? <laughs> well, they weren't Ex. together, oh. but they were like, whatever. So I put her so boyfriend's pissed. shoes in the freezer. I was going to put them underwater and then put them in the freezer, that but I didn't. Okay. I put them just in the freezer. <laughs> so they woke up at like seven the next morning. So they'd been in the freezer for like seven hours. And it's January in Iowa. And they come into my room. They're like, Kelsey, where's where's Nick's shoes? It's like, I knew it was his shoes. Um, so I told them where the shoes were and he had to walk home in you January. Tell him? No, I told him where the shoes were, but he, he had to put on. his frozen shoes on They're, and uh. go out in the middle of January in the snow where it was like zero below in his frozen shoes. Did he ever come back? No, he ended up cheating on my sister and then, Ugh. yeah, it was like, he deserved, he so he deserved, deserved it. it. Okay. But... Don't mess with twins. I, I, I try not to. to <laughs> um, well, I can I really, I really appreciate you coming. It's been a ton of fun, and uh, I really appreciate you being uh, your authentic self. I've very much enjoyed watching you on Peter season. I've enjoyed talking to you. Um, you, you didn't dif- disappoint. You, uh, you're just an honest. Uh, you, you are who you are, and that's how I like mm-hmm. my people. Um, and for those of you listening, I always appreciate you guys listening. Uh, let's be, uh, let's be kind to everyone who's been on this season, uh, especially Peter and and Madison and especially Peter, uh, and even Barb and even Barb, Barb. uh, Barb's going to be fine. Uh, Do you think Barb's (laughs) getting a lot of heat? Yeah. I think she's getting hit. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should be nice to everyone. There's two sides to every story. Yeah. I will say, you know, because people have been critical, you know, we were talking, not to backtrack about the recap, but I just want to emphasize how hard of a position Peter was in. His brain was literally broken Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of the season. And he he went through more than I did on on The Bachelor. Uh, He even got hit in the head and got a scar. So... (laughs) He certainly didn't handle it perfectly with with Hannah Ann, and 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 Hannah Ann is certainly justified to feel how she did, and and Peter certainly wronged her. But uh, the Peter I know and the Peter I got to know is certainly not malicious, and he leads with his heart, and that can be sloppy and get him in trouble. But uh, uh, I think we should be very uh, supportive of of uh, Peter and Madison, and we wish them the best. And whether they work out or not, um, we should all be rooting for them. So. Uh, 
with that said, uh, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, as always, uh, don't forget to send in your uh, questions for our Ask Nick episodes. And for those of you who might be listening for the first time because you're such fans of Kelsey, uh, <laughs> don't forget that we do uh, do some awesome episodes on Mondays with our Ask Nick and, and callers come in and share their very vulnerable and honest dating stories. And we, uh, I give them advice. Sometimes we have some guests. Maybe someday Kelsey will come back and, yeah, and help us with LA. that. <laughs> when she moves to LA. And then on Wednesdays we have some uh, like you're listening today, some more traditional interviews, um, a lot of interesting people and fascinating people. Next week we have Penn Gillette. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he'll be joining us uh, of Penn and Teller. Very fascinating uh, interview uh, of a very fascinating and talented man. So uh, thanks for listening, guys. As always, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate, we appreciate your reviews. And Kelsey, once again, thanks so much for uh, coming along. Thanks for having me. We will see you on the beach. Hey, celebrate her Possibly. first podcast. Her first podcast. Poss- Yay. You did it. All Cheers. Right. Thanks, Cheers. guys. Thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs>